Hello everybody, it's Van Berman here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at single rank versus dual rank RAM on the Ryzen 5000 series of chips. Now something that I've seen a little bit about, I've seen Gamers Nexus's video, I've read a few bits online and I figured it might be quite interesting to test out for myself because I happen to have four, now three 8GB sticks of RAM so I thought we'd do a little bit of a comparison, so I've done some benchmarks regarding it. Um, so the new bits, the new two new sticks of RAM that I've picked up are the Crucial Ballistics RAM, not the Max or anything, uh, which are here. They're 3600 um, sticks, CL16. I think that's yeah, that's all for them. <laughs> and then I've got my old ones that I bought originally for the test bench. Um, these are the ones being replaced now, and these are 3200. CL16. Now these ones don't overclock well at all from what from my old from my previous testing. But I'm hoping that the new the crucial ones will be slightly better. I've heard that they're meant they're meant to be quite good. So I'm um, very quickly and probably it's probably gonna be wrong, I'm gonna go through uh, single and dual rank. So from what I gather, um it's quite difficult to find out if you have single or dual rank dims so the most consistent way seems to be that anything sort of 16 gigabytes or higher will be dual rank not always the case though and it's all to do with well some of the factors are chips on both sides and i don't know what i'm not sure 100 percent what what makes it dual or single something with the um how the sticks are configured and put together but effectively all the all four of these are single rank, so that's not a problem. But when you put four sticks of RAM in, as opposed to to, to two, you should well, in theory, see some performance increase. Now, looking back on it, I sort of did things the wrong way. So my single rank tests are with uh, the Crucial Ballistics RAM, and then I put all four sticks in, but clock them to thirty two hundred megahertz to match with the Viper, Patriot Viper RAM. So there was a difference in clock speed of the RAM as well as capacity. So that's just worth bearing in mind. If I was to start this all again, <laughs> I would do it with the Viper RAM as, a, as the benchmark effectively, or the baseline, and then add in the Crucial RAM, but like underclock it, so they're paired together. And then the only difference would be the capacity. So one of the things I will also say is I used a Acer um, Gigabyte uh, Aorus B450 MATX board, so it's not a, a 550 or a 570 chipset. Not sure if that makes a difference. I haven't actually read anywhere that it does, but if it does, then that'll explain quite a few things for the rest of the video. Um, I think all that out of the way, the processor is an 80 uh, 5800X, eight cores, 16 threads. That's not been touched in terms of overclocking or any sort of adjustments in the BIOS. The GPU is a GTX 1080. Moderate overclock, same for both. And other than that, there's nothing that's changed. It really just wanted to try and limit it to the RAM. So we went through a series of tests just to try and eke out what, what I thought might be the best way to do it, try and put more strain or more performance from the on the CPU. So obviously Cinebench is a good good one to start off with. So I'd look at Cinebench. I then used user benchmark to compare the two against each other, you know, two against each other with the only difference being the RAM. Uh, we then also did a Three Kingdoms, Total War Three Kingdoms benchmark. I did the Dynasty mode because it's not one that I've used for benchmarks before, so we did that. I also did a Shadow of the Tomb Raider. No. Yes, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I get the the, the Tomb Raider na uh, game names confused. And then I also did a Time Spy as well. So I'll be putting them up on the screen as we discuss them. Um, I'll go through the, the the sort of the most interesting one first, and that is the uh, single rank score for Cinebench. So that will be a five thousand nine hundred and fifty eight for um, the multi core and six hundred twenty one for the single core. I'd look at sort of other benchmarks, and that is um, perhaps like a few points lower than what other outlets have got, but it's it's not not far off so we've got a decent baseline 
there. And then when we have a look at the jewel, rank gave us a slight increase, not too much, um, less than 40 points, 38 points. And that was a uh, five five thousand nine hundred ninety six on the multi core, and it lost one point on the single core. But a, a couple of points are not really indicative of any sort of improvement. Can be run to run variance, of course. Forty uh, thirty eight points, you know, is shows that there is a slight step up, but not enough, I think, that would uh, warrant you to go out and buy another two gig. Um, buy another two dims of RAM to make it up to four in order to, you know, gain this perceived advantage. Um, for me, that wasn't the case. And, you know, I think 38 points is, like I say, it's not trivial, but it's not going to, you're not going to notice the difference. And I think, you know, overall, that's sort of where I'm sitting with a lot of it. So if we have a look next at the Shadow of the Tomb Raider scores. So I ran this on the lowest preset to try and put more strain on the CPU rather than the GPU because obviously you know that makes that is a more of a indicative approach I guess so this one I think we actually like, saw a decent amount of, of difference although of course you got to remember we are dealing with different amounts of system memory so if we take a look at the single rank score for the lowest um, we were so the thing I was trying to look at was you know how what's our GPU bound percentage? Because I quite like that in the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmarks. And you know, if I run it on, I did run it on highest. But the problem is, you know, it's ninety nine percent GPU bound. Doesn't really tell me anything. So this one is sixty two percent GPU bound, which is you know pretty pretty good. I guess it's uh, obviously you would want probably a thirty series card with a fifty eight hundred X anyway. But that's by the by. And then if we compare that to the dual rank scores, so that then becomes 77% GPU bound, which is a 15% increase in that metric, which is quite nice to see. It does actually indicate that we are getting some sort of improvement. Uh, I will say, though, this is the only one where we did, and it seems that it, it seems as though it could be... Obviously, we didn't send a bench as well, but it seems as though it could be a case-by-case -case basis, and... Yeah, I'm not certain that I'm seeing too much of a... Uh, well, we've seen a trend so far, but we'll have a look at the nice, uh, the Dy Dynasty Warriors, the <laughs> Dynasty Mode benchmark from Three Kingdoms. So the single rank... Oh, I didn't have the single rank up. Okay, well, let me just quickly get a single rank up. So single rank gave us an average of 175 FPS, and then at the dual rank, we actually lost FPS. We lost 4.2 FPS, which is similar in terms of percentage wise when we you know look at the shadow of the tomb raider scores and yeah so it seems to be <laughs> one's made a difference and one hasn't i didn't want to test too much just wanted to keep it you know fairly basic uh, we then had a look at the 3d mark results which were um sorry times by 3d mark times by results and actually the as you can see the single rank performed better than the dual rank not by a lot only by a few points or a few in terms of percentage wise anyway um, not enough for me to say that 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 is actually a fundamental fundamental difference um, I think you know probably one of the factors to take away from it is that you know you are going to see run to run variance and you know we're, we are literally talking about a few FPS uh, I think for me Show the Tomb Raider is probably the best. So I just talk you through the user benchmark scores. Now looking at that, they're both very close. They're sort of in a few percentage points of each other. Um, the CPU was literally 1% difference between the two runs. And yeah, the only difference was we had a slight decrease on the, on the RAM performance. That's probably to do with it being a slightly lower speed. Um, but once again, that was by 1.4%. So everything is you know, roughly there or thereabouts. There's no real noticeable improvement. Um, well, that was actually a degradation in results, so in favour of the single rank. I probably should have said that at the start, but that's where that sort of fit. And I guess, conclusion time, <laughs> would I run all these four sticks of 
memory. Well, I wouldn't run this these configura this configuration anyway because it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because different speeds. But uh, my testing is inconclusive. I think while we, you know, I've got stuff that proves it and stuff that disproves it. In any case, I don't think it's worth the extra cost of buying more dims. If you happen to need more capacity for you know, more intensive applications, that makes sense. You know, could do it anyway. But yeah, I think manufacturers need to be a lot more uh, open, well sharing about whether it is dual or, or, or single rank, which they could quite easily do, I think, you know, in product descriptions and whatnot. Um, but generally, if you buy high capacity ones, you're more likely to get them, you know, as being dual rank. I think the thing that probably I would take away from this, if you've got two two sticks and you're concerned that you're missing out performance, especially if you're on a B450 board like I've got, that's probably one of the that's maybe one of the key caveats. Would have to test it on a on a 500 series board, really, to get some more. There's lots of variations that we could do on this. Uh, I would say, yeah, if you're if you're worried about losing performance, I'd just recommend maybe you know having a play around with the memory that you've already got. If you're willing to put that, if you're willing to put the time and effort in, and that would probably you know eke out a similar sort of performance increase that you're looking for going dual rank. Be interesting to go out to you guys and see if you've got any sort of information or anything on that. That'll be really cool um, in the comments. It, maybe I've got something wrong. Maybe I've done something wrong. <laughs> That's always a possibility. But yeah, it was just quite interesting to to test the theory. I think for me, I was sort of hearing the news, thinking whether I should, and it's a bit older now, but I hadn't considered it until recently, whether I should, you know, have instead of having these two new sticks of uh, RAM, where I maybe should have bought four and done it that way. Um, but I think I'm quite happy still to have two, especially in the test bench. I'll spend some time, you know, overclocking it, um, using the RAM timing application that you can get for Ryzen, and just sort of eking the most I can get out of it that way, rather than being concerned about the dual rank. So it might be different for different people, different configurations, of course. It's a bit of a shame, because I was hoping... I always go into these ex experiments, if you like, sort of hoping for a conclusion. And usually if it gets to this point, I don't make the video. But it was one of those where I felt as though, uh, I don't know, given the varying hardware configurations that I've, you know, that I've, uh, I've gone through and I've tested, it might be of value to someone at some point. Uh, probably not. But, well, I don't know. Who knows? And it was very much interesting for my own learning as well in terms of that. And I think, yeah, maybe at some point in the future, well, no, maybe I won't. But it doesn't matter. You know, we've got DDR5 coming up soon. We're going to get a whole new platform refresh and everything else. So it really is irrelevant for now, I would say. Yeah, don't worry about it too much. There is potentially some performance that you might be leaving on the table. But, you know, if my results are anything to go by and we can use them as indicative expectations, then it's 3 FPS when you've already, you know, when you're already over 100, when you're already, yeah, when you're already at 150 FPS. And it's 40 points in Cinebench, which, you know, I'm sure with enough tuning of the CPU and modifications in the BIOS, modifications to your own RAM that you've already got you could probably squeeze out another 40 points anyway, if you were so inclined. So I'll leave it there, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Do leave me any comments, questions, or queries down in the comments below. It's been actually quite fun to go through and test out the hardware and test out this theory. And I will, well, one thing I will say is I'm very impressed by this RAM anyway because the scoring that I got from this, unsurprisingly, in, in Cinebench and such, was... I think about 55 points higher than when I had the Viper RAM in. So that's, you know, just to give you a bit of a, a basis for comparison. And I will spend some time having a go with this, seeing if it is any good <laughs> or not. Uh, I think so far it is. I quite like the fact, I quite like the styling on the Crucial Ballistics RAM as well. And if this had been out at the time when I got the Viper RAM, I might have stumped up the extra few pounds to get this. So worth bearing in mind. And, yeah, as always, guys, 
I've rambled on far too long. I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.